Hi. Praise God. Good morning. Good morning. Hallelujah. Jesus is the King. Amen. King of Kings. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Thank you so much for your warm welcome. It is my privilege and honor uh, to be a friend and brother in Jesus uh, with Rick, go on Oprah with him. It was absolutely awesome. Jesus uh, was mentioned by Rick many times, but they cut it out, the J-bomb. Um, <laughs> But the way that God had me do what I did up the stairs, they couldn't cut it out. And so we, uh, I just want you to know it's just been a pleasure to stand on the front line of God's army with Rick on that one instance and boldly confess Jesus as Lord, and it was just so much fun. I'm so glad to be back here in Saddleback. Thank you for your welcome. I would just like to actually open up this morning with a, uh, a quick video, if you may look to the screens. Thanks so much. I was born in Melbourne, Australia, 1982, and my parents had no idea that I was going to be born without arms or legs. I was the only one that I ever saw without limbs. My faith in Jesus Christ was sealed after seven years of wondering why, God, I was born this way. Uh, he answered me very clearly through John chapter 9, and I gave my life to Jesus at 15 after reading about how he came across a man who was born blind. And I'm like, hey, hold on a second. This looks interesting. <laughs> and no one knew why he was born that way. I'm like, perfect. So I read on and in verse three of the ninth chapter, Jesus said, it was done so that the works of God would be revealed through him. And I'm like, wow, God, if you had a plan for the blind man, you do have a plan for me. And that was the beginning of my personal relationship with Jesus. Youth groups were starting to call me. Churches were starting to call me. Opportunities were opening up everywhere for me to share my testimony. I was speaking in front of 300 sophomore public high school students. Three minutes into it, half the girls were crying. One girl in the middle of the room started weeping. She put up her hand and she said, I'm so sorry to interrupt, but can I come up there and give you a hug? In front of everyone, she came and she hugged me. She cried on my shoulder and whispered in my ear, no one's ever told me that they love me. No one's ever told me that I'm beautiful the way that I am. I couldn't believe it, it changed my life. That was when I knew. I was called to be a worldwide evangelist. You don't know what God can do with your broken pieces until you give God your broken pieces. And I want you to know when you fall down, God's grace is sufficient. God's hand will come down and pick you up. By the grace of God, we have seen face to face a half a million souls say yes to Jesus and be plugged into a local church. As crazy as it sounds, our goal at Life Without Limbs Ministry is to preach to every single soul on the planet, seven billion people. We believe that this goal is possible as the Holy Spirit is gathering an army and building up supporters to send us and accomplish this mission. Praise God. Uh, my life sometimes feels like a sprint, man. Um, the title of, of this uh, weekend's message is uh, Stand Strong and Then Run. Everyone say run. You know, I love the beginning of the race. You hear a bang, and they're like, yeah, and they're running. I can't show you how well I run. Like, I just, <laughs> my 15-month-old runs faster than me already. Um, he's so beautiful, Kiyoshi. And um, my wife, Kane, they send their love and regards. 
and um, we have just been so blessed to see God open up doors for the ministry of Life Without Limbs uh, in so many different ways. We just started our own smartphone app as well. You'll hear from me a daily two-minute radio program that's in 600 radio stations, so check that out. And uh, God just opened up doors last year for me to preach in 26 countries, meet seven presidents, speak at five congresses, and the longest meeting I had with the president was about an hour behind closed doors with their family. That happened twice. And the shortest meeting that I had with the president, um, it was uh, two minutes long. But God had a, a plan for those two minutes. Um, the president was later asked to make a decision, uh, nine days later, publicly, what he's going to do if he's going to open up different scenarios for uh, women to abort their children if they have a disability. And he said actually that Ecuador could do with a couple more people like Nick Vujicic around, so no more legalization will happen. Isn't that awesome? So we are, we are so blessed and so thankful, and uh, 12 of the 26 countries put us on live TV on a mainstream channel for free with no ads. So 400 million people heard the clear gospel of Jesus, Jesus as Lord. Isn't that awesome? 400 million people, we're so excited. And I know some of you are supporting us and praying for us. Um, just thank you so much for your prayers and your support. We really need you, we thank you for it. And today I just hope that this message is gonna encourage you. Um, I, I'm sure a couple of you have heard me preach before, but can I ask, who has never heard me preach before face to face? Put your hand down, okay, quite a number of you. Um, I'm from Australia, down under. Um, the way you speak Australian is you just paralyze your tongue. Um, <laughs> and um, I'm losing my accent, uh, but one thing that I just uh, gain in my life is just the need for more of Jesus in my life. You never come to a place in your walk with Jesus where you feel like you have enough. Uh, that's a dangerous feeling to have. And sometimes we forget that even as believers, we sort of forget that we're running the good race, the real race. And um, we're going to talk about standing strong and uh, then running. And the reason why I've called it Stand Strong First is because we're celebrating our uh, um, uh, release of my latest book, uh, especially for teenagers, uh, about standing strong against bullying. Bullying is a worldwide epidemic, and we need to come back to the true values of us as human beings, knowing that we are children of God, to stand strong against the lies and to walk and run with Jesus. Amen? So we're so excited. We have resources at the, at the back, but um, that's all my commercials there. 1 Corinthians chapter 9 is where we're going to read uh, from verse 24 to 27. So excited about Saddleback LA. Wow. That's so cool. I think this is their third weekend or fourth weekend, and uh, I know that Jeremy's down there, and it's just beautiful to, to connect with you guys again. God bless you. God bless your church, and uh, I love Rick and all the team, so I'm just so excited that he asked me to come back, and he, um, he, uh, he and I, we, we know it's just the beginning. I'm, I'm, I'm his half-brother. See this? Half-brother. <laughs> As you get to know me, like I, I love like, you know, playing with people sometimes. Um, since like 80% of you haven't seen me before, I have to tell you just one story. I'm in the car one day and the person next to us couldn't see anything but my head. So I just did this. And she was, she thought my head did a 360 spin anyway. Look, let me open up with this. God doesn't need to give me arms and legs. Does he? No. Does he promise that he's going to give me arms and legs in heaven? Yes. Does the devil care whether or not I have arms and legs? No. All he wants is my joy to be taken away and my focus to be distracted. And there are so many things in this life that gets us distracted and we're doing all these things and spinning all these plates at the same time that we don't even hear 
sort of the next steps in that race that God has for us. And sometimes we miss things, sometimes we, we question things, sometimes we're not looking for God's perfect will in every season of our life. The people who don't know Jesus Christ and they live their life, uh, I feel sorry for them because either they just believe that they're existing for the pure sake of existing, and 90 years to me is not enough to live. I wanna live for billions and billions and billions of years. The way that God created us within our soul and our spirit, we know that there is something more than just 90 years. We know there must be a purpose out there. But for us to actually live according to that purpose, we need to first look for it. To actually look for it, you need to start believing in something you can't see yet. That is faith. F-A-I-T-H, full assurance in the heart. And sometimes fear will disable you. Fear, you don't need arms and legs necessarily in your life, but you need peace. You need purpose. And some people are just disabled by fear. They never start running. And God says, go, go and sin no more. Go and tell the world that Jesus lives. Go, go to all that I have for you. Go to the places I'm gonna send you. Go, G-O. Put a G-O in front of the word disabled and it spells God is abled. It's not about me, it's not about my ability, it's not anything about that, it's all about Jesus. It's not about what you have or what you don't have or what you wish you had or what you wish you didn't have. It's all about Jesus, that no matter where you are in your life right now, if you ask God to forgive you of your sin and you repent of your sin, God will come into your life, forgive you of your sin, you'll receive his life, his blessings, his life eternal and his life life's plan for your life. Not my plan, I don't want my plan. Sometimes we just need to get over ourselves and actually realize that sometimes God actually has a better plan. I suggest a plan to God and he doesn't say anything sometimes. But we gotta understand that God's ways are higher than ours and thoughts are higher than ours and I showed that video for, for the summary of my testimony. And I want you to know in your life, I don't know what you're going through, but God does. And for those of you who don't believe in Jesus yet, maybe you're believing that then all paths lead to heaven. The Bible says that's not true. The Bible says there's only one cure for death and it's resurrection. No one else resurrected from the dead. Not only did he raise himself from the dead, Jesus, as Lord, God in flesh, but he raised other people from the dead. <laughs> that's awesome. And if I believe that I'm following and living in the power of the person who said he was God, who was perfect, who did die for my sin and rose himself from the grave and did say, if you believe in me, I will resurrect you too. Hey, arms and legs or not, for 90 years compared to eternity, I will run the race that God has for me with or without arms and legs, with or without cancer, with or without whatever you wanna say at the end of that. If I have Jesus, I have everything I need. Now does that mean I, I don't have a pair of shoes in my closet just in case he says yes to me? No, I do have a pair, okay? <laughs> just in case, okay? I wanna be ready. But what we need healing first is in the inside and to hear the voice of God. Hearing the voice of God, when you hear a phone ring, you pick it up. Okay? When you're sometimes dialing into heaven and it feels like he's not picking up, don't hang up on God, he's listening. I hung up on God because I didn't understand his plan. God said through my parents, Nick, God's got a plan for your life. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. I have a hope, plan, and a future. I'm like, no way, there's no race like that. There's no heaven, there's no God. Look at all the pain in the world. If God loved the world, then why is he letting so much pain happen? Later on, you realize in the Bible, God doesn't give us pain, but whatever the enemy tried to use for bad, God turned into good. I can't do anything with my broken pieces, but there's nothing that God cannot do. I've seen pain. I've seen miracles. 
Yes, I've seen blind people seeing, deaf people hearing. In fact, the first miracle I had seen was when I was 19 in South Africa, starting uh, to be an evangelist 12 years ago. And a woman came up, she gave her life to Jesus, and then we went out the back, we prayed for her back, because her back was like this for like six years. Her legs were uneven, she had a motorbike accident, the doctors wouldn't touch her, and she's like, could you pray for me? I'm like, yeah, sure. So a couple of us, we started praying. My brother was there, my cousin was there. We prayed for 10 seconds, very simple prayer. In Jesus' name be healed. And we repeated that a couple times. Seriously, 10 seconds. <laughs> and we were like, say what? <laughs> Did you see that? Yes, I saw that. I'm like. <laughs> Anytime, I'm ready. It was weird, man. I still had no arms and legs by the end of the night. God will use the foolish things to confound the wise. God can use a man without arms and legs to be his hands and feet, to prove that it's not about Nick. It's not about his ability. It's not about him and his strength and how, how he speaks all around the world and uses his hands greatly as gestures and body language while he gets excited preaching. It's not about me, it's about Jesus. I didn't write my story, Jesus wrote my story. He knew me before the earth began. And I don't know about you, but yeah, it's good to have a job. It's good to have a relationship and get married and have kids. It's good to have that stuff. But until you find Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, there will be always something missing. You can't rely on you because you will fail you every single time, just about. I needed him, not just because of this, but for my heart, for my mind. I was listening to the encouragement my parents were saying, but then listening to the lies at the same time, the lies saying, you're not good enough, Nick, just give up. No, I am wonderfully and fearfully made according to Psalm 139. Oh, Nick, you should just give up. No, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. At age 10, I didn't believe the truth because I wasn't running the race. I wasn't in the right race. The race where it's not just getting things in your life and doing things and having things. What happens after you get married? You think you're the happiest person alive. You need to talk to some married people first. <laughs> Amen? Amen? All right, so then after you get married, and I love my wife, trust me. But if you're not happy single in Jesus, then you're not gonna be happy married. Amen? Amen? Go through marriage, have kids, then what? Well, then you get a job and you promote yourself, get there, work harder, and then what? Get your kids through school, and then what? Send them off to college, and then what? Well, now you start getting the Mustang, and you know, you, you do your own little thing, and you take vacations here and there. Yeah, right, you know, I want you to know something. Then what? Then your kids get married off. I want you to know this. I want you to hear it. Then what? Well, then they have kids. Awesome. And then what? There is a race to run. And sometimes we're nearly taken out altogether. God allows things that we don't understand, but I want you to know if you hold on to him, he'll hold on to you. If you trust in the Lord with all your heart, even when you cannot walk, he'll carry you. By the grace of God, he kept me here on earth, even though I tried to commit suicide at age 10. The bullying at my school convinced me that I was a mistake, that I'd never eventuate to anything. Man, what a lie. When you realize it's just the devil, I say just the devil because the devil's nothing compared to Jesus. And when Jesus starts living in you, you realize, oh, it's just the devil. <laughs> devil, talk to the foot. <laughs> and get thee beneath me. 
You are my foot, what? Stool, man. That's why God gave me a foot. I got two toes, peace. <laughs> and you turn your back on the lies and you come to the truth and the truth will set you free. You can be poor in your pocket, poor in your bank account, poor in different ways physically, but rich on the inside. The race is not about being perfectly happy and satisfied here because that's not what we're here to do. Which race have you seen everyone get ready for the race, right? Like they're like, they're like this. I don't do it well, but just imagine. And they're doing this and you hear a bang and the gun goes off and they're like, ah. Oh. So how are you doing? Yeah, good, good, yeah. Nice weather today, yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't do that. The gun goes off and bang, you know, you just go. And you do anything you can to run the race, to get first. Let's read this, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, 24. It says, do you not know that those who run in a race all run, but one receives a prize? That's how fast you ought to run. Do you sometimes trip up and get hurt and bleed and sprain an ankle? Yeah. But it's not about being first. Thank God for that. It's not about being first in the race of righteousness. Thank God for that. It's not about being first in a race of generosity. Thank God for that. At the end of the race, God's going to say, well done, my good and faithful servant. When you look at my, can we get a wider shot of the table here? If this, if this width of the table represents my lifespan from here, beautiful, here to the Bible. Now imagine if we, if we actually sleep eight hours of the day, eight hours into 24 hours is a third. In our life, we actually sleep around a third of our life. Then we got this. And then, and then at work, right, we work around seven or eight hours uh, a, a weekday, right? So let's take another approximately a third. And then, you know, you get yourself ready, you go shopping, uh, you do some entertainment, um, you know, you just, you know, what then? Look how little I've got left. Look. That's a long, long, long history already and I've just been living. From here to there are the choices you make and it will determine what race you're running. Don't run for money, money, drugs, sex, alcohol, pornography, fame, fortune, whatever this world can give you. Don't look at earthly things because they will all fade away. Listen to this. And everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a perishable crown. But we, for an imperishable crown. I don't need what the world can give me. I want what Jesus wants to give me. Eight years ago, I met a, a boy, no arms, no legs in California, just like me. I was 24. He was held above the crowd and I looked at him, little Daniel, and I got the father to bring him up on stage. He had a little foot, just like me. Same side, truly a mini me, all right? And he's sit up here and he's looking up at me. I'm looking down at him. And I can't give him a high five, so I gave him a low two. <laughs> and everyone cried because it was a miracle. And I told his mom that when he goes to school, I'll come and speak at his school. Well, it was amazing to see my mom hug his mom and my dad hug his dad and they cried. If I was born without arms and legs, gave my life to Jesus Christ, ran the race that God had for me, but only at the end, only at the end to go to heaven? I mean, are you serious? Only at the end just to go to heaven? You don't even know what heaven is then if it's just only going to heaven. 
I go to heaven, I live forever, no sickness, no disease. I see Jesus, I see his pierced hands and his feet and he died for me and we're gonna be there forever and ever and the devil's gonna be done with and all the principalities and powers of darkness, there we will live happily ever after. And plus, one day I will be in heaven and imagine that little boy who's now in heaven, right? At that time, he's still alive, but running to me in heaven with his new legs, me standing on my new legs, him and I hugging each other with our new arms. I can only imagine that we're gonna be crying together and he's gonna look me right in the eye and say, Nick, thank you for being my brother to help me to believe that this called heaven was real. When you don't get a miracle, you can still be a miracle. What do you think I rather want? One more person to live forever or have a little bit more money? Amen. Money? What do you take with you? Nothing. Nothing. Not your garden, not your car, not your nothing. Just you, your soul. And the encouragement you've planted all around you hopefully souls to come with you. I can only imagine. Now, don't, don't handcuff me because of my doctrine, but I just like this illustration. Imagine God sees me and he says, well done, my good and faithful servant, welcome home. And then he sort of looks over my shoulder and says, who'd you bring? Amen? I wanna run that race, the race that matters, the race that counts. And I'd rather be paralyzed in the arms of Jesus in that race than be the first prize winner and runner in any other race. Hallelujah. Verse 26, therefore I run thus, not with uncertainty. <laughs> so good. He's saying I'm running the race and I run with Certainty. How uncertain have I been in the last 24 hours coming to this huge campus of Saddleback not knowing where the church was and I've still got the map. And I've been here before. It's a hard building to find on campus. I got the map and I'm still going and we're still uncertain. I love being in the place uncomfortable uncertain in what God has ahead for me, but I'm certain that He's with me. I'm certain that He'll guide me, carry me, be with me, and I know why I'm doing what I'm doing. That's the race of certainty. Certain that I will be resurrected from the grave. Certain that God's power is in me and will encourage people around me whether I see it or not. Thus I fight not as one who beats the air. It feels like you're fighting for stuff and trying to get more and do more. You just feel like you're in the rat race. Not God's race. Or your race. Or the proud race. Or the rich race. The selfish race, God's race. And then Apostle Paul closes with saying, but I discipline my body and bring it into subjection, lest when I have preached to others, I myself should become disqualified. When I tell you that Jesus is the Lord of my life and Jesus is my friend, he's not just an acquaintance. When I tell you that I want to run that race, the first thing I need to do is come into subjection to God's will and His plan for my life. And the greatest way to know the map, I love how Rick says this, who better to tell you your purpose than the one who made you? Amen? 95% of the mornings, my wife and I, we wake up with the coffee. The coffee doesn't magically appear, we make the coffee. We don't need discipline to make a coffee because we need the coffee very badly. <laughs> Anyone else that way? 
So you don't need to be that disciplined to really do something you really need to do, okay? But even beyond getting some caffeine into your blood system, you need to cover yourself with the blood of Jesus that day to bring your focus that whatever steps you take during your run of your life that day, the next 24 hours, is under the wing of the Almighty. 95% of my mornings with my wife, after we get the coffee, we get the children's Bible out. Why a children's Bible? I know, I'm an evangelist and I preach from the Bible. But I do read myself a children's Bible as well. It's really interesting, it's amazing. My wife and I, we're reading the children's Bible and we got it because you know we were gonna be parents. So we thought, well, we just get it ahead. We're reading this thing and we're like, did you know that? No, I didn't know that. <laughs> did they just make that up? I don't know, let me check. And we open up the Bible. Babe, it's true. <laughs> Amazing, I didn't know that. We're actually just about to finish the entire Bible in that children's version. And it, it was 400 pages, it wasn't like three. It was 400, okay? And it was amazing to go through that. But put on the armor of God. It's almost like every day you gotta hear that, bang, run for today. Lord, help me today. Lord, help me to make those decisions right, your decisions. Lord, help me to be patient. Help me to be kind. Help me, Lord. Refine me one day at a time. Teach me, Lord, to pray and how to pray for others. Help me to be a light to others. Help me, Lord, to be a better husband. Help me, Lord, to be a better wife. Because if you never ask God to help you to be a brighter light, you never will be. It's not by might, it's not by power, but by the Spirit of God. Amen? There is a purpose. There is a race that we got to run. Get in the right race. Hallelujah. Can we have some music in the background? I play piano, but I'm not warmed up yet. <laughs> let, me, uh, let me share with you why people don't come to Jesus. The first reason is because if he's such a good God and a loving God, why is there pain in the world? We talked about that. God can give me arms and legs. He doesn't have to give me arms and legs. More than arms and legs, I need my soul restored. I need eternal life. Whether you believe it or not doesn't change the fact that it's true. God has a plan for you, that is the truth. For you to live in it, you have to find it. To find it, you need to start looking for it. It starts with hearing about it today and asking God for faith to believe that your spirit that's hearing these things responds he's calling your phone just pick up the phone he loves you the other thing that stops people from coming to Jesus is because they don't believe that Jesus really loves them that much and I know that's like my biggest question. Why do you love me so much? I don't get it. I don't even love me, sometimes. Sometimes I hate me, and you still love me? Despite my sin, Jesus still loves me. Our Heavenly Father loves you unconditionally. When my wife was actually pregnant with Kiyoshi, I put my foot on her belly to feel him kick. And I felt a and I, I was so moved in emotions. I looked up at my wife, straight in her eyes, and I had tears in mine, and I said, babe, I love him. I never seen him, never saw his smile, never heard his laugh. He didn't earn my love at all. Before he was born, I knew him. <laughs> and he was mine. God loves you that way. No, 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 Nick. God doesn't love me. I need to be a better person before God, you know, feels that I'm worthy. You want to hear a miracle? I'll tell you a miracle. 2008, India, Mumbai. 
went out to the red light district, brothel houses, a one city block, six stories high of 150 brothel houses where 10 year olds were kidnapped, forced into prostitution for $700. And a fraction of that, a good 10% was because their parents sold them. We went there to talk about Jesus, went into the fourth house, saw an old woman sitting on the floor. She looked about 144. She must have been 90. She was so weak, she couldn't keep her mouth shut. She's looking at me like this. And through a translator, I'm speaking to her about Jesus. On the wall was a whole wall filled with the gods they worshiped. Told her about Jesus first two minutes, three minutes, and a, another woman walks in, really angry. She says, who are you? What are you doing? What are you talking about? Like this. And I said, I'm Nick, and I'm just talking about Jesus. She said, stop talking about your God. I don't want to hear about this. Show me that your God is real. Stop talking. Show me. Make my sister walk. I said, what do you mean? She said, that woman is my sister. She hasn't stepped out of this house for four years. Look at her legs, skin and bone, they were. She said, she's paralyzed. We have to carry her to the restroom every day. Look at her, in the last two weeks, she's really lost all of her strength. She's about to die, look at her. Show me that your God is real. And I said, um, God, um, She's not putting me on the spot here. She's really putting you on the spot here. I just wanna make that clear, okay? <laughs> we prayed for a couple minutes. My friends lifted her up, one on each side, trying to lift her. She couldn't put her legs on the ground. She, she tried to stretch them out. She's in excruciating pain. You could see it from her facial expressions. She tried to put her right foot down, ah, like this. She couldn't walk. Sat her down in a chair, looked at her angry sister. She was still angry. And I said, God, we're going to pray more. So we pray. Start massaging her legs. We had a group of us praying for her. And her face went like this, from this to this. I'm ready. I said, what? She says, I'm ready. And I'm thinking, no, 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 no. We need to pray a little bit more that shows you the tiny seed of faith that I had. You don't need a lot of faith in the living God, hallelujah. You can have oceans of faith, but if you're praying to a dead God, He's dead. But if you pray to Jesus, He's alive. And the seed of like a mustard seed can move mountains. My little faith. We prayed a little bit more and I said, okay, get up and walk. She didn't need any assistance. She grabbed herself, she, whoop, without touching the thing, the arm and she whoop, like this. She's walking around, she's looking down. Her sister's like, whoa. I'm like, whoa. All my friends are like, whoa. And she is like, whoa, baby. And she's walking around, she's jumping up and down. I'm like, don't break the legs that God just healed, sister. <laughs> the sister went to the gods and said, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I said, whoa, 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 I said, haven't you been praying to your gods for four years that she walked? She said, yes. I said, that wasn't your God. I said, that was Jesus. Your God's dead. Now here's the miracle. The woman who got healed wasn't just any old woman. I later found out that this woman was the one who started the city block of brothel houses 45 years prior. She was the one who started it all. She recruited the pimps and madams and the kidnappers. She made money off the abuse of women and human trafficking. God still healed her. <laughs> Nothing can separate us from the amazing 
love of God. Have you walked off track? Have you, have you ran in the right direction but maybe fallen into a pit of depression? Don't worry. God will outstretch His hand as He's doing right now. He will be with you and He won't let you stay there for a moment longer than He will allow. He knows how much your heart can bear. He's with you and Maybe we won't get all the answers until heaven. But the answer is, to all our questions, Jesus is Lord and He's faithful. Jesus' blood will never fail you. Hallelujah. Today, if you admit that you have not made your life right with Jesus Christ, Today is the day where you pick up the call and you get ready to run, to first stand strong in knowing that you're beautiful, you're God's child, He loves you, He'll be with you, His grace is sufficient, that all things come together for the good for those who love Him, who've been called according to His purpose. You are called, and you today, I hope, will answer. Answer the call, not because that you think you can take the call or endure the race on your own. That's why we give God all the glory, His grace to hear the call, and His grace and mercy to run the race. Today, I want to ask you, will you ask Him into your life? Let's all pray. I just feel in my heart, let's do the, the riff of amazing grace or just some chords of amazing grace. That'll be great. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you for your amazing grace. We thank you, Lord, that you are God. And you know the things that we carry and we're burdened with. And we pray in Jesus' name, you would comfort us and heal us, and complete us. Lord, we pray for physical miracles all across this place, but Lord, more than a physical miracle, we pray, Lord God, that our soul would be restored in your hands and that we'd be carried until eternity. God, we just give you praise for your word and your faithfulness right now. God, may you touch the believers, the ones who already have a relationship with you. And if there'd be anyone who feels tired and weary, comfort them, carry them, refresh them. Give them the sight of what you see for the day. The calls you want them to make, the hugs you want them to give, the people you want us to forgive. Help us to be the light in your love. Lord, for anyone who doesn't know you yet, we ask God that today would be the day of salvation. Today would be the day that everything changes. Pray, Lord God, that if there be anyone who wants God to change, who wants you to change their life, that they'd call out to you today. With every head bowed and every eye closed, if today you know in your heart you are not walking with Jesus and you want to walk with Him today, you want to repent of your sin, you know you don't want to sin anymore, you want to start running the race that God has for you. His plan, not your plan. Put your hand up right now if you can say, Nick, I want Jesus in my heart. Just raise it nice and high. You're not walking with Jesus today. You want to do it. That's it. Come on, raise your hand nice and high. There's about 40 of you. Raise your hand nice and high. With every head bowed and every eye closed. Thank you for your hands. Put your hands down. 
Would you repeat this prayer after me? Say, dear Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sin. I'm so sorry for that. Thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross and raising yourself from the grave. Thank you, God, that you promise that as I believe in you, I will also be raised. Lord, heal my heart. Change me. Fill me with your Holy Spirit, your peace, your comfort, and your joy. I want to know you more each and every day. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.